Hello everyone, welcome to the new episode of Unscripted Dialogues. I'm your host Aditya Sachwani and today as a guest I have Alex and Tapas. They are part of the Accelerate Me, which is the largest Accelerate startup program in the north of the UK. It's a pleasure having you on the podcast today. It's a pleasure for being here. Thank you Adi for the invite. Thank you. Let's begin in 3, 2, 1. So, starting with Alex and Tapas, what is your background? Tell me a bit more about your background. Okay, so I am a final year IT management for business student. Mm-hmm. I just came back from placement. I worked as a business analyst and project manager in a software development company back okay. home in Romania. Um, and now I came back to Manchester to mm-hmm. wrap up my university degree and I'm also leading uh, as you've said, Accelerate Me, the largest student-led startup accelerator uh, in its 10th year of existence. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, here to share the news and the opportunity that we offer to okay. students. That's very good. Um, so I'm a first year studying economics and finance at the University of Manchester. Um, I was interested in entrepreneurship even before coming to university. When I was in high school, when I was 16, I started my own startup that's called Loop which is essentially a platform to help high school students discover their passions through internship and job opportunities. Um, it had over 10,000 students actively using it at one point and about 120 organizations registered on our platform. And then when I came to the university, the first thing I started looking around was a community for entrepreneurs, a community where entrepreneurial activities are promoted and actively managed. And Accelerate Me was like the perfect mix of both which is why I decided to join it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Amazing. So why did you join Accelerate Me? Because I fell in love with it at the first event that I joined, which was their launch event back in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the fact that we can offer this platform to mix together and bring together students, student entrepreneurs with investors, industry professionals, yeah. and cut down the time it takes for students to get to these professionals, Mm -hmm. because I think that's also one of the biggest challenges of students. We are sort of afraid. We're not really sure how to contact these professionals, how to get to them, how to actually get first, first hand, first level advice. And Accelerate Me has been doing this for nine years now, and we're in our 10th year doing that through our events and the Accelerator program. So in short, if it's going to be just, uh, just one point, I really, really, Uh, like what Accelerate Me has been doing. And when this opportunity came up for me to lead it, I didn't have to think about it too much. I was like, okay, let's go for it. Let's do it because it's such an amazing thing to be part of and such Mm -hmm. an amazing thing to spend your time and energy on. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So can you tell me a bit more about the structure of the organization or the starter program? Absolutely, absolutely. So... um, As I mentioned, we are a startup accelerator program. This is how we started. Uh, Startup accelerator program is a series of workshops where uh, you are basically equipped with all of the skills, tools, Mm -hmm. and knowledge that you need to start your business idea or to turn your business idea into an actual startup or an actual business. Um, This is the biggest thing that we run every year, usually between February and May. This year, it's no different. We run the application process in the first semester. We review them by the end of January. Then we get people onto a boot camp. And if people get through that boot camp, they join our accelerator program, which is 12 weeks of workshops, as I've mentioned, Mm -hmm. with uh, industry professionals, with opportunities of networking, with complimentary office Mm -hmm. space here in Manchester. So we're basically offering the students who apply and get into the program all the resources and introductions they need as well as knowledge to you know up jump start to jump start their business in parallel with that we also run some open house events on various topics related to entrepreneurship and growing uh, yourself as a person mm-hmm. we've had personal branding we've just had an idea thon that yeah. went really nicely yeah. we held workshops on how to pitch a business idea or pitching yourself in general because I think that's one of the most important traits of an (laughs) entrepreneur that you can have. You need to be able to sell yourself in front of investors, in front of potential customers. So 
yeah, we run this accelerator program and we run uh, we run open house events for students. So we're by students for students. <laughs> Tapas, yeah. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, that was exactly why I joined Accelerate Me. Um, all these events essentially help entrepreneurs and students develop these soft skills that in turn can be <coughs> so universally, practically applicable everywhere mm -hmm. in the business world, in the tech world, and so on. So yeah, th that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So what is the current opportunities if you'd like to promote to anyone who has a business idea and part of the university wanting to join? Um, so should, uh, should we do the third elevator pitch of Accelerate Me? For sure. Okay, perfect. So looking at you guys, looking <laughs> at the camera. All right. So if you have a business or a business idea or know someone who does, redirect them to Accelerate Me. We offer equity free funding, workshops with professionals, office space here in Manchester and a series of networking events to bring you everything you need to start your business idea. This year, we're offering 10 to 15 startups up to 5,000 pounds in equity free funding, as well as plenty of opportunities to turn that business idea of yours into the next big thing here in Manchester. So do apply, check out our Instagram page, accelerate underscore Miko, and uh, do submit an application. The deadline to apply is the 15th of January, 2024. And yeah, make our lives difficult this year by submitting <laughs> high quality applications. Make sure that you put your heart and soul into what you write to us, because before we get the chance to invite you to pitch your idea in front of us, the only thing we will know is what you give us in the application form. So that's something very important from the team, from us towards people who are interested. Really make an effort into how you write your application because you might have a brilliant idea, you might have already talked to investors, you might have already talked to your friends, try to get to get a feel if uh, the idea would have traction or not. But if you do not include these things clearly in the application, we wouldn't know. So, yeah. Yeah. Again, stressing on equity free funding, because that's essentially free money. And this is one of the best opportunities that you'll ever get here in your um, college, university experience. Might as well just make the most of it. Just send in sure. the application because all of us have had some idea at some point in our life and we were just not brave enough to pursue it. The ones that do end up pursuing it and stay together are the ones that end up winning big at the end. So mm -hmm. this is the best period in your life. You're young, um, you're ambitious, you have the courage to do whatever it takes and yeah, apply. And if you're thinking of any particular industry or is my business idea good or not, scrap that we're looking for proactivity and we're looking to see why you are the right person to start that business idea so uh, we've had artificial intelligence web3 blockchain textiles software as a service etc 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 so we've supported a number of startups in a number of industries we are focused on students and we really want to show that even though we're young and we're students and we're run by students we can find those amazing potential entrepreneurs still in university and support them to launch their business ideas. So don't be scared by the fact that you have to go through this application process because it's nothing, there's nothing scary about it. There's an application form that you need to complete. We review that and then we invite you to pitch uh, at one of our partner locations and then uh, you get into the accelerator program if you've done a, a good job at these two things. So. It's nothing scary, it's nothing complicated, so don't be afraid to submit thinking that, oh, my idea is not good or, oh, it doesn't have potential. Put it out there and, yeah, let's see how, how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that's a pretty good initiative because in the early years of university, you have so many ideas, but sometimes you might not have the opportunity to get the right guidance regarding it. Yeah. And over here, you also provide workshops which help you think about it and gain soft skills. Like I attended the idea thon. Mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to work with random people, network with the others, get to know about other interesting ideas. So it's like very holistic for your development. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty good initiative and good work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And no idea is a bad idea. I mean people sometimes just don't pursue it because they think the idea is bad. Yeah. But unless and until you put your work into it and actually go out in the industry and explore it, no idea can be declared as a bad idea. 
and because they keep it a secret most of the yeah. time. So don't keep your idea a secret <laughs> because a successful business, and it's not us who say this, it's people who with much more experience than us, it's 10% the idea, 90% the implementation. Exactly. So yeah, you can have ChatGPT generate business <laughs> idea these days and uh, it generates some pretty good ones as well. Yeah. But what we do with our program is give you the tools to implement that idea. So don't be afraid to keep your idea secret because one, most probably someone on this universe and planet maybe thought of something similar in the past. So it's innovation is not necessarily about finding something that nobody ever thought about, but it's about finding a way to implement it and take it to market in a time that makes sense and with the proper tools and resources. And number two, if you keep it a secret, it will remain a secret and it yeah. will not ever turn into a business. So Exactly, yeah. for sure. Even a good idea at the wrong time can mess it up. And uh, you either succeed or you learn. Yeah, there's always, as there's no it, such thing as failure yeah. as long as you learn from it. Exactly. We know that most of the startups worldwide fail yeah. and it's mm -hmm. fine. The experience itself, itself is sometimes even more valuable than yeah. The success that's or failure true. of that's true because of the when itself. when I started out back in high school, um, when I created Loop, I had no idea what it was going to be like two years down the line. Mm -hmm. I had no expectations whatsoever about the number of users I want on my platform, with the organizations that I want on my platform. I just found a problem, um, that was high school students looking to get jobs mm -hmm. and internships, but they couldn't because LinkedIn was saturated with college students and professionals. Mm -hmm. And yet these other websites as well, but no one was focusing on high school students. So when you think of an idea, just think of the problem and find a niche market that you can target to and just go all in on it. And the experience that you have is going to stay with you for the rest of your life for future startups or in your corporate workspace, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, fair enough. So I saw on the website that uh, the startups which have been a part of this program have gone on to raise around six million pounds worth of funding. So a follow on investment, that is correct. And that number is only getting bigger and bigger. So, so far we have deployed over 200,000 pounds in equity free funding since we've existed as an organization. Mm -hmm. And once our startups graduate and they join our alumni network, they go on to raise some of them in in north of millions of pounds. The latest number that we have on our startups is over six million pounds in follow on investment, which only confirms that even though we're by students and for students, we manage every year to do something right with this accelerator program, which is also one of the reasons that we're here spreading the word about the huge opportunity that we offer to students. So we give you the funding, we give you the workshops, we give you the support network, we give you everything you need to take your business from zero to one as one of my favorite business process. <laughs> Adding on to this, yeah. um, I think this also proves another fact that it doesn't really matter if you're a student because a lot of students feel like they are still at university, they might not have the experience that's required to build something on a larger scale. But these numbers just prove the fact that even though you're at university, even though you're studying some course, um, as long as you put in the time and effort into an idea religiously, um, you can sort of go big, get investment, get funded, and make it big. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. So you'd be. So what do you think is your favorite startup which has been a part of the Accelerate Me program? Which that one do you find the most interesting? Yeah. Go first. Um, for me, it's personally Miskip. Mm -hmm. Um, it was. The, it was part of the uh, 2019 cohort. Yeah. It was run by this uh, lady called Grace Vella. Yeah. Um, she essentially, she's a football player and she loves football. She has played football all her life. All right. And she felt the need to create a sports clothing brand specifically designed for mm -hmm. women, by women, just like we are building for st uh, students by st uh, students. Um, and yeah, she recognized the niche. Yeah. She developed the idea and launch the product and it's a big success. Yeah, and it also has a social twist to it, right? Yeah. Because some of their proceeds from all of their sales go to charity as well. Mm -hmm. So she also implemented the social aspect there. So yeah, the... But this is a perfect example of social entrepreneurship as well. For sure. You're also building an organization at the same time using those monetary funds to help those mm -hmm. who might need it. 
Grace is a very, very good example. And I'm also thinking of Scott Martin. Okay. He was part of our cohort in 2018. He then started a business called AI Patient. So he was yeah. a bit ahead of the curve with artificial <laughs> intelligence and using that. Um, but yeah, he was so well ahead of the curve that uh, he now raised millions in follow-on investment. He The company is now called Recourse AI, mm -hmm. and they are employing artificial intelligence models for healthcare. So providing support, guidance, and advice to uh, people in the healthcare system. I yeah. believe they are partnered up and have quite a big partnership with the NHS here in the UK and plenty of other such organizations related to yeah. maybe public and private healthcare as well. Um, and he's actually one of the people who wanted to uh, publicly talk about Accelerate Me and he even right. testified that it was because of Accelerate Me at the mm -hmm. very, very beginning of his venture yeah. that he was able to, you know, push through because mm -hmm. we held him accountable. We gave him the advice. We gave him the support. And some of the people that we introduced him mm -hmm. to through Accelerate Me uh, helped him, you yeah. know, upstart yeah. and <laughs> jumpstart his business. So, yeah, these are two very big examples, but we have others as well. They're on our website. They're on our Instagram page. We support uh, as we've mentioned, mm -hmm. students from uh, different backgrounds, irrespective of their background, business, finance, engineering, yeah. STEM, non-STEM, fashion, etc., etc. So uh, it's not only these yeah. two big ones, it's a lot of other startups that we've supported and have gone on to, to do great things. And this is actually a good point that you read. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're studying business or if you're studying medicine, that you can't start a technology company. You definitely can. As long as you have a viable idea and you can explain it properly to us on the application, you can just go ahead and apply for it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good opportunity for everyone. Absolutely. So what do you think are the three most important skills for an entrepreneur, according to you? Um, do you want me to take this one first? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, so number one, communication. I mm -hmm. believe that uh, communication and I would go even a bit further and stay, say stakeholder engagement, but that sounds a bit pretentious, <laughs> but I believe you cannot be an entrepreneur if you do not know how to communicate with the different people in front of you. There is one way of communicating with your team. There is one way of communicating with a potential investor. There is another way of communicating with potential clients. There is one way of creating the marketing and branding of your product so that you convey very clearly your idea out there. So I would say that communication is key mm -hmm. um, as a skill. The second one I would go for is um, trusting yourself mm -hmm. because trusting yourself and okay, this also links to communication again, but putting yourself out there and really trusting that your idea will succeed even though it might fail and you need to be okay with that. Yeah. The reason I'm saying this as a very important thing for an entrepreneur, in my opinion, is that if you yourself do not believe in your idea and your business, how will you convince investors? How will you convince the people working for you? How will you convince customers that the product or the service that you're selling is, is worth their time or their money? So communication, trusting yourself and your business idea. And <clears throat> third one. Hmm. I would go for courage, okay. courage and being yeah. bold, not necessarily a skill, but a trait that I find important for an entrepreneur. You always need to be mm -hmm. bold. You always need to put yourself out there as much as you can, yeah. because as we've said with the business ideas earlier, mm -hmm. if you keep them secret, <laughs> they will never turn into successful businesses. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same when you are already an entrepreneur and you already have a product or service. Mm -hmm. If you do not put yourself out there and if you don't make sure that people know and hear about your idea, how will they buy it? How will exactly. they turn into a customer? So, <laughs> got lost here a bit, but uh, yeah. It's courage, um, it's stakeholder engagement. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Courage, <laughs> communication, <laughs> and uh, trustworthiness yeah. in yourself and your business idea. For sure. Do you have the um, same? Or no, I, I have quite a few things that's different. I feel like entrepreneurs and startup founders in general should be really great storytellers because All right. um, when you're building something that, that's new for society and you're targeting an audience, you need to be able to express yourself in a way that connects with them. Yeah. For example, when I started Loop, 
Um, and I went around talking to people my age and I was selling them my perspective on it as to why I felt compelled enough to start something new for yeah. them. And that is something that resonated in their minds um, about students helping other students and students gaining these opportunities. So number one, storytelling is really important. I think um, communication, like you said, is essential as well. Adding on top of that, I think founders should also be having the risk-taking mindset. I'm not necessarily taking stupid risks and losing money on it, yeah. but if you feel like there's some really good potential out there, um, you just have to have the faith in yourself and go ahead and take the mm-hmm. jump. Um, and third, I think founders in general and entrepreneurs need to have a generalist knowledge in a way because sure. when you're running a company, that's very different to working for someone or studying mm-hmm. at university. When you're studying at university, you know the textbooks you need to read, yeah. you know um, the lectures you need to attend, you know the homeworks already assigned to you, the assignments come on a specific date, and you need to submit it by deadlines. Mm-hmm. But when you're running an organization, there's no deadlines apart from the ones that you set yourself. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're managing different teams. You're managing the marketing team, you're managing the finance team, you're managing the technology team. Mm-hmm. These days, every, every company has a tech team. Every company has a finance team. Every company needs the accounting, uh, books, etc. So it's very essential for you to become sort of a generalist and have a broad knowledge of everything that's out there, uh, irrespective of what you study. So these are the three things for me. And just to wrap it up nicely and link our ideas, I would say that one thing we may have both communicated, but a bit more indirectly is ambiguity and being mm-hmm. okay with it. Not mm-hmm. knowing what you don't know. Yeah. Because you never know the risks that will come yeah. up. You never know or you cannot anticipate all of the challenges that you're going to have. Yeah. But it's only about setting that right mindset of, okay, whatever comes next, we will handle it. We will deal with it and we will move on. Whether exactly. it's a challenge with marketing, whether it is with your product, yeah. whether it is with investment, etc. Exactly. etc. Et so I would say that ambiguity and being okay with not having all the responses yeah. to all the questions is something that an entrepreneur should definitely yeah, there's no way you will yeah. have every single knowledge yes absolutely, absolutely absolutely it's about uh, problem solving as a skill or a technique because whatever happens in the end you have to figure out a solution somehow mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah that's something you just learn along the way along the process yeah there's like literally no course you could take <laughs> for problem solving yeah. i have tried this before i've tried finding the books on problem solving. Yeah. I've tried going on YouTube and watching lectures and problem solving. Mm-hmm. But unless you start and you take the initiative, yeah. you take the jump, there's no way for you to actually learn it. I think it's the experiences mm-hmm. and the perspectives that help you with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So my last question, where do you see yourself in five years, next five years? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where do I see myself in five years? I don't know. I don't know and uh, just to link back to the answer I just gave you I'm okay with the fact (laughs) that I don't know Um, it might be running my own startup already it might be that I joined another startup of with a tech or business idea that I really really liked or it might just be that I'm working in a corporate uh, environment and I'm employing entrepreneurship and developing project as part of a bigger corporation or a bigger organization in general. What I do know is that in five years, when I look back, I don't ever want to say that I've had a boring and repetitive <laughs> job, but that in anything that I did, be it, as I said, corporate startup or my own business even, it would be something where I try to find the next big thing. I try to add a little bit of innovation on a product or a service that was already out there or maybe even create my own. So yeah. that's, that's what that would be my response. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Thank you. I've created a blueprint for the next five years. Um, I'll try my best to stick to it. Mm-hmm. I know at the end of the five years, I see myself as an entrepreneur starting or running my own organization. Yeah. Um, but until then, since I'm in my first year of uni, I might just try finding an internship in a similar space, probably in finance Mm -hmm. the first year. And then at the same time, I'd like to explore some business ideas on the side as well. I have some in mind currently that's in its um, idea stage. I need to take it to MVP and yeah, just test out the different things that are out there in the real world, gain some experience and final product, entrepreneurship. 
If Unscripted Dialogues is uh, <laughs> happy enough to have us here next year, Tapas, <laughs> let's discuss how many times you've changed that blueprint. <laughs> I really, I really, really appreciate your your energy. Yeah, and yeah I, abs- I definitely support it. But yeah, I think I've had 10 blueprints exactly. so far about the next five years. And <laughs> yeah. some of them just went like this and poof, yeah, <laughs> into the bin and then back to the drawing board exactly. again. But it's always good to have things planned out and yeah. Congrats, congrats Thank on you. that. But yeah, yeah. let's uh, you, you let's reconvene one, two years from now and <laughs> see, sure. see sure what happened. Yeah. Exactly. Experienced and I'm still learning. Uh, we're both still learning. <laughs> we're, we're all still here to learn. We're all students. So. All right. Fair enough. Thank you for watching the episode. And do sign up to the Accelerate Me Start uh, program if you have any business ideas. And subscribe the channel and follow the Accelerate Me page on Instagram. As Accelerate well. underscore Miko. Link to the application is in the bio. Deadline to apply 15th of January 2024. Thank you very much, Adi, for having us here. It was a pleasure to to be here with you today. Right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks a lot.